Welcome. This is question number 29 from the Integrated Math 2 practice test for 10 Ready TCAP. This is subpart 3. Question says Chris is looking up at the top of a tree. He's standing 20 feet from the tree, and his line of sight is 35 degrees from horizontal. His eyes are 5 feet above the ground. To the nearest foot, how tall is the tree? Now, I know that it's at least 5 feet tall because up to here gives me the 5 feet. I need to find out this distance. So what I'm going to focus on, or this length I guess, is this triangle here. So I'm going to draw it up here. What do I know about it? I know that this angle is 35 degrees and I know that this is 20 uh, feet. That's the worst 5 ever. Fix that. Um, and it's a right triangle because he's, this is a horizontal and the tree is considered to be vertical. What I can do with this information right now is do an analysis of one of the functions of trigonometry. So either sine, cosine, or tangent. So before I get to that, I'm going to come up with some analysis of whether or which one I'm going to use. The reason, by the way, I have to use that is because if I've, I don't have enough information to do anything else. I know that it's a right triangle. If I had two sides, I could use Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Don't have that here. All I have is an angle and a side. But I'm looking for this side here. So I can use one of the trig ratios. So I'm going to use my old standby. You probably use SOHCAHTOA. That's most likely what people use in classrooms. But when I was in school, I always liked this one better, the one about the aardvark. It's just kind of, I can visualize an aardvark curling up inside uh, a guy's hat that's laying on his coat or whatever. I just remember it easier. I don't know. So the old aardvark tells me the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent, the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. I need to figure out what I'm working with. Um, the side opposite the right angle, of course, is the hypotenuse. So right here, it's the long side of any right triangle. To find the opposite side, I kind of just fly the plane out of the hanger, try not to hit any of the sides. The side that it strikes is the opposite side and the adjacent side. It's really, adjacent means it's beside, but in this case it's the side that makes up the angle that we're focusing on that isn't the hypotenuse. So pretty much adjacent could be other, but other is pretty uh, vague. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to find one with the opposite side and I'm given the adjacent side, so I'm going to work with tangent. Tangent of 35 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. Oops, terrible. Terrible. I was trying to fix it and made it worse. I don't know how I figured I would fix a G by putting a top on it. Anyway, so now I can substitute in my values. The opposite side is of course X or whatever. And the adjacent side is 20 feet. Setting up this um, equation is a really good idea if you do these types of problems just because it makes it so you don't you know what to do next. The easy move, in this case it works because most times you will just take the number and multiply it by this. Uh, people who don't set it up and don't think about what it means. To get rid of divide by 20 you do multiply by 20. So in this case it really works. X is equal to tangent 35 times 20. And we'll get to the answer in a second. The problem is what happens if you were given it in a different order and x was on top. So tangent 35 and I'll pick different numbers so it's not as con uh, different number for this so it's not as confusing. In this case you can't just multiply by x on both sides and you definitely don't multiply by 5. Because to get rid of it I need to multiply by x on both sides and then that just gives me tangent 35 times x equals 5. So I'd have to divide everything by tangent 35. But if you set them up, if you set the problem up so you can see them before you solve them, you'll just know that when x is on top you just multiply. But if it's on the bottom, eventually all you'll end up doing is 
sub is uh, switching these two out. So x is equal to tangent or five divided by tangent thirty-five. Again, that doesn't apply here, but when you get to the test, I'm sure that on occasion they will give you ones that do that because that's the kind of thing test makers do. Anyway, let's get over to tangent thirty-five times twenty and get this one done. I'm going to use my calculator to do that, but I'm also going to make sure that I don't do the thing I always do, which is forget to convert uh, or to change things into appropriate forms. And then my calculator is having a moment in history, so I'm waiting for it to pop up. There we go. Perfect. Um, I need to make sure my mode is in degrees, because the question gives me the n measure of the angle in degrees. It's not in radians, but if you put it in incorrectly, uh, that's the type of thing that you miss this question, even though you knew how to do it, because of simple stuff like this. So tangent 35 times 20. Oops, ran into my triangle there. Fourteen point zero. So x is equal to fourteen. Once again, that's not the answer. So be careful. It's uh, it's another place where you can. And by once again, I mean this is another place where you could do something simple and end up missing the question. We were trying to find the length of x, which is the length here. This additional length is fourteen. So you might at some point wanted to put like tree is equal to 5 plus x. And now that I have 5, I know what x is, 5 plus 14. Tree equals 19 feet. And that's it. It's not a super difficult question, it's just one of those questions where if you don't have everything in order, you're in big trouble. Uh, my regret, I guess, is that I didn't have this statement written much earlier in the game. Because I'm the type of person who will find x and just immediately substitute or type that answer in. And then you did all that work, you found the tangent, uh, you, you figured out which or trigonometric ratio to use, tangent. Uh, you find the value of x, and then you do all that work, and then you forget to add the 5 to it, and you get it wrong. So it looks like you don't know what you're doing, but you do know what you're doing. And, but the, the way the test is set up, it can't detect that. It can just detect the final answer. So be careful that you have some statement written much earlier on than I did about what you're trying to find so you don't make a minor mistake and end up missing it.